Hello everybody, this is Barry from HNW, and today we are going to be reassembling a 2J2 horsepower top half head. Now we've already built all of our assemblies. Um, we've got those on other videos for you to watch. But let us just get started on it. Right now you can see the quill housing is already built. The first thing we do at this point, we, we when we do one of these, we actually um, take a little sander and sand the top off so you see how nice and smooth and clean this is. We do this with every surface, top and bottom of every one of the housings. So first thing I do is take a little WD-40 and that just, I like it to be there. Okay, we're going to take the bull gear housing. As you can see, we've already got this assembled. Um, one thing you'll notice when you're doing this, when you put this assembly together, is when you have it in, gauged, you see how the gears here are, they're not necessarily 100% even, but they're very close to even. When you go to neutral, it spins and then it goes up to high. So, all right. Now, many times, I'm a little tip. When you're redoing one of these, you'll have to take a file to the top of each of these ridges. Because if you put in a new lower castle gear, like we do almost every time, you need these to be smooth to where that gear will slide up and down. Okay, so you take your housing. Come up, you're going to line it up. Slide it down. And you see how it just slides down, sits right on there. Nice and smooth. Okay, you have three washers and three nuts. So you start over here. I'm going to notice on the quill housing that there's no um, spindle oil or anymore. We took that out because when we rebuild a spindle, we turn it into a closed system. So there's no re reason to oil the spindle bearings anymore. So take your nut and your washer, just put it on. Now we're going to go on, not tight, just where they touch. Maybe a little finger tight, that's about it. It's on. You guys can move it, but it's pretty stiff, which is what I want it to be. Okay, now we're going to put our grease in the bowl gear. Again, we don't use the tubes. You have tubes with yours, you'll just put the tubes down here, but I'll show you how full they put. The big goal is you want the grease down below the big bull gear. And the reason it doesn't have to be all the way up to the top is because when you're at the top, the gears aren't engaged. They only engage when you're in low. But this is the reason why many times people will call and ask exactly how much grease goes in here. And I stutter because we buy our grease in a barrel. Now we're going to install the brake bearing cap that goes on the top of a small bearing. Now, many times when you tear this apart, you'll see two wavy washers. I always just put one wavy washer back on. Well, there's no real reason to have two of them there. What I do is I take a little bit of my excess grease, just tuck it in there, and basically this is to hold the wavy washer in place, and that's pretty much it. Put that on. Put it over the top. And work it down. Use a little rubber mallet if you need to. We have two. 1024 socket head cap screws to go right here. Once you get that down, make sure your shaft still spins okay. It does? Okay. Next part, we're going to put the cover plate on top of the big bolt here. Put it right here. Three. Slotted head screws. Put 
And what I do at this point, I'll take my rag and kind of clean up any excess grease I have, just so it's nice and clean, at least for a little bit. Okay, next part that's going to go in is the timing belt pull. You can see there's a flat side and a side that's got a bevel. This is the side that goes down towards the bearing. What you do is you just find your keyway, kind of line it up here. The, if you bought the um, the rebuild kit for your um, bushings, using one of the arbors comes in very handy here. Once you get this done, this is very important. Look down in the little slot. And make sure that you do see the key, because if you had a loose key and it kicked out, you're going to have a big problem quickly. So, look down. You see the top of the key. Always give it a little spin. Put your nut back on. Fifteen sixteenth wrench. I'll use a little pry bar, put it right here behind the spindle. And there we go. And we're on. You don't have to get crazy with this thing. Okay, we're on to a, the um, pancake housing. Again, this is the stationary discus housing. We already have the new bearing in here. This has been all rebuilt. Everything's right here. Make sure your um, snap ring is down and seated. So at this point, take this, put it upside down on top of your spindle. You notice on your cap, you have a rounded side and a flat side. That becomes very important when you're putting this back together. See right here, that bevel, that springs all the way in past the rounded side. This one here, not. So this is where it goes on the flat side. And this also, it's got new brake shoes, new brake springs in it. See the grease in here? That's all greased up because when you do, when you move your brake, you want it to just slide back. So, okay. So you just kind of line that up with the flat. And there's two, the two holes where the screws go. Kind of slide it down. Get down that far. Take your two quarter 20 socket head cap screws. Um, they could either be one inch. You may get some that are three quarters of an inch. Getting close, you just want to kind of go down slowly on each side to make sure everything's going down equally. See that? We're rubbing. So we are not down yet. Keep going. There we go. Okay, once you get down, make sure you're plenty tight. What I always do is I always pick it up, give it a spin, make sure we're not rubbing. Okay, now, take it over the other way. Hold it like this. Take your timing belt. Very critical. Words should be the right direction. Not really critical, but it is in our shop. Put your timing belt over the, the teeth of the front slot here. Go down, kind of hold it in position. Now be careful because you could smash your fingers doing this. Kind of work it around the belt. Work it down. You felt here that clack into position and high. All right. So here we go. Now, got four. Lock head cap screws. One, two, three, and four. Same thing here. We're going to go in. We're not going to go really tight, just enough to where they're in, but put them in loose first. Make sure you got high, low, and everything going on here. So there's high. Neutral's working. Spindle's not turning. Below, 
low going on there, so we're good shape. Goes right back up into high. So everything's functional there. Okay. Now we're gonna put on the dry fill. Same thing, label up. Okay, the front very disc. Again, same thing. We've already replaced the bushings, the key, the bearing in here. This is going on as an assembly. So just kind of put in the key. Pop it down there. Okay. Now, so you can see, you can push it up and down, but it stays in position. And that's exactly what you want it to be. Upper snap ring. Now you're in position here. When you put your belt in, just kind of make sure you're inside of those. We are now ready to put on the belt housing. Now you'll notice on the belt housing how we never take this part off completely. We leave it all attached. Okay, you'll notice on the belt housing, we never take this and the tilt plate and the front dial off. That all stays on. You can all come off in one piece as long as you disconnect from there. So take it, slide up over the top. Make sure it's just kind of sitting there dangling in position. It's kind of sitting there. Okay. First thing we're going to do is put in the uh, socket head cap screws and the pivot pins that are holding on the top bearing cap. Be careful when you do this, you don't want to drop these and then you're tearing your top off again. Again, put the first one in, loose. Line the second one up. Put it in and now we can go tight on both of them. So, and you want these to be relatively tight because you definitely do not want them to back out on you. Okay. Notice as we're assembling, we don't have any of the pins in it. We do that on purpose. And we find it a lot easier to line everything up correctly with the pins not in it. So, four socket head cap screws. Got to kind of just feel, go down until you feel them start. These we're going to put in and we're going to leave them fairly loose right now. Because we're going to put our bearing cap on here. Four on the top and then there's a hole in the back for a Another cap screw. I'm going to tell you there's about 50% of the time you have it, 50% of the time it's not there. Great bearing cap. Got the bearing. There's a wavy washer under here. We have the cap. Now, when we tear one apart, the first thing we do on teardown, we mark where the front was originally. Here's, we just put some pin marks in there. Put it back on. Line up your holes, three socket head cap screws, and these will be anywhere from three quarter inches to one inches. It really depends on whoever was into this thing. Originally there were one inch, this one's got three quarters in it. Once you got all three started, just go take a couple turns at a time and go around the circle. Okay, once you have that on, go back to your other screws or your other bolts. And again, do like you did on the other ones. They might be tight, but you want them to where they're not sloppy loose either. Okay. Now, you have four screws for your front cover. These are quarter 20, I believe, by one and a quarter, I think. Now we're getting ready for the fun. We're going to put the motor on. Two horsepower motor. 
Same thing, we've already got the new bushings and key in the assembly. We have it back on. Um, I believe this motor probably has a new motor shaft and the same, same thing. It should be, you can push it up and down by hand, but it should stay in position. When you're doing this, you want this all the way down. Okay, what you do is tip it, pick it up, go to the back, kind of see how this is hooked on the edge with your other hand. You're going to reach underneath and work the belt up to where it's going in between the two halves of the pulley. Once you have it down there, set it down and set it down, and we're ready to put the, the bolts in. Okay, line it up, get the first one started. Same thing, don't go tight until you have them both in. Put our handle back on. Handle has a little wavy washer that goes on. This goes in, you see this little slot here, set screw. I always kind of, sometimes you need to There. Eighth inch. Tighten it down. Get nice and tight. Okay, right, now you're just going to crank it as tight as it'll go. You don't have to force it. You're just trying to put a little tension on the belt because we're going to be removing the um, the compression screws on the spring. So, okay. Keep compression screws under here. Normally, on the left hand side, and it's on this little sticker. And the reason I started C I M R. Obviously, we're on a bench. We have a lot more room. If you're on a machine, you're going to do this with just a standard wrench. Okay. So now we have tension on everything. The next step will be getting power to your machine, powering it up. And once you have it under power, you're going to run it at about mid-range speed and slowly start tightening these three nuts and all your socket head cap screws that are loose and that kind of self-centers everything as you're going back together. If everything goes well when you get done, you should have a nice, smooth, quiet running machine. Um, and that's basically all there is to reassembling the top half of a variable speed head. As always, have a great day and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.